Emerson Robinson, or Red to his friends and fellow railroaders, experienced the transition from steam to diesel power, together with improvements in freight cars and other technology that fundamentally changed the industry. From shoveling coal, firing locomotives that pulled 25 car freight trains in the 1950s, to running quick express trains of well over 100 cars long by 1990, Red's career spanned a transformative time in Canadian railway history. After his retirement from CN, Red returned to his roots as a steam locomotive engineer at the Alberta Prairie Railway, a tourist railway operating on the former CN Stetler subdivision, the same stretch of track where Red operated trains through his entire career. When I grew up, I was short distance from the railroad watching those trains go by, you know, and it gets in your blood. I had a little bit of want in me right from, I was old enough to realize what a train was. I was born in 1933, so that makes me pretty ancient. There was four kids in my family. We'd always go out and wave at the train. The train is leaving Watts, which is about a mile away. And we can hear it whistling, just whistle, whistle, whistle. So we think there's something wrong, you know. But anyway, just as they're getting almost opposite the farm, the fireman grows up on the back of the tender and picks up a Christmas tree and throws it off. Well, that's after we found out that uh, west of Drum Heller, there's quite a few spruce trees growing there. And they, the crew on the way freight would stop every year and they'd go and cut trees for themselves, you see. Well, they decided to cut a couple for us, too. It was the first Christmas tree we ever had. There was a neighbor across the highway, young Andy, him and I were about the same age. We were uh, thrashing, and Andy came over. He said, if you're thinking about a job this after you're done, he said, the railroad is hiring. I said, well, I hadn't really considered going to work, but anyway, when we were finished, I went into town and went to the locomotive foreman, told him who I was, how old I was, and he said, I hear you're an iron fireman. He looked at me, you're not heavy enough, he said. That wasn't a good thing to say to me. I said, if there's anybody on the railroad that works harder than a farmer, you show them to me. Oh, okay, and he threw the paper across the desk, take it to the CN doctor, and if he passes you, I'll hire you. So he didn't know, but the CN doctor was our family doctor. So when I got to the doctor's office, I said to Dr. Wilkins, I said, that foreman down at the roundhouse says I'm not heavy enough. The old Doc Wilkins said, don't worry, he said, we'll check you out. And you had to weigh 165 pounds. I got on the scale, it was 162. So, old Wilkinson, 165. Then you had to be 18. My birthday is the 23rd of September, and on the 5th of October, I was on the rails. The work didn't bother me, you know, but the first month or so, my legs just ate because the motion of the engine, see? <laughs> and when you were, when you reached for coal and then turned, there was a, a paddle on the floor you had to step on to open the door. The doors were butterfly. And every once in a while, if you hit a bad curve or something, you'd miss the pedal. And when, of course, you're already motion, you know, coal would be all over the deck, you know? From the time when I started, like on coal-fired steam engines, when you got to the end of the road, about the only thing that was white on you was the whites of your eyes, shoveling coal. Well then, you'd go to bed, you'd wash, have something to eat, go to bed, and when you got up, you were black again because that coal dust sweated out of you, you know? But if you had a good engineer, and good coal, 
You couldn't hurt a fireman, but we were tough. And nobody, nobody argued with a fireman. The first trip you make as a locomotive engineer is probably the one that sticks in your mind. We had to go to the roundhouse to get the locomotive and then go to the shop track to get the head end brakeman. When I see the brakeman coming, I know I got trouble. This guy was a know-it-all. Anyway, we make the train up, get the air test, start out of town. So he starts telling me what to do. So I said, Bill, we've got to have an understanding. I said, you're the brakeman, you belong on that side. I'm the engineer, I belong over here. Now you go over there and sit down and shut your mouth and we'll get along fine. The end of the conversation. The one time I got called to go out on a plow, we were coming north. They plowed the track once before and then we've got a thaw, and then of course it froze, and then where the plow had gone through, it was like ice between the rail. And I think that day from the time we left till we got to uh, Stadler, the plow had been off the track 11 times. And the poor section men, you know, well, you know how heavy them damn climbers are and they've got to crawl under that plow, you know, and they got to spike them down so they'll stay. So everybody was just wore right out when we got done. I've always had a pretty tender spot for kids and their love of trains. And uh, one day I see this man and he's got a little boy, maybe three or four years old. When the brakeman said for me to stop, I stopped and he was just below the cab window. So I opened the window and spoke to him and I said to him, would your little boy like to come up? Oh, he said, is that possible? I said, yeah, come on up here. So he came up. As it turned out, the little boy was deaf. Probably he was up there for five minutes and then we were going to leave, so I had to get him off. But he said to me, he said, you know, you will never know how much that meant to my son for you to allow him to come up and have a ride, you know? So it makes you feel good. The one year, I think there was about five or six, what we call 3,500 steam locomotives. And they were beautiful engine, powerful and that, this was oil fired. And then out of, like working out of uh, Jasper or Edmonton, they had 4,300 and they were a wonderful locomotive. Oh, man. And powerful, you know. A steam engine was like a living thing. And if you looked after it, it would do the work for you. You had to keep the water clean, the boiler clean, and have a decent fireman to keep the fire on. It would respond to the man that was driving it. Well then, when we got the diesel locomotive, hell, you could go to work dressed like this, you know? Yeah, it hurt the town. We probably lost 50 to 75% of the workers because the steam engine well, you had to have two on that locomotive, where the diesel was just one man, you see. And then uh, the diesel engine, the trains went from probably 30, 40 cars to 100, you know, didn't near, nearly as many trains. It was a great change, and it was for the better as far as I was concerned. But the romance went out of the railroad when the steam engine left.